Hi, um, I'm phone up Michele. Um, this is my studio. It's pretty basic, as you can see. It's really a Mac running Windows, actually, and Yamaha 01X audio interface, even speakers. Yeah, today I want to show you like a couple of tricks to on Cubase, how to make some proper like sidechain pumping effects to get some uh, that kind of um, old-fashioned Daft Punk French house style. <laughs> Very nice, like pumping effects, which is um, because Cubase doesn't have sidechain. I mean, the old version, this is um, an SX3, doesn't have sidechain. I use um, this plugin, which I love. I use them basically on everything, really. It's um, Camofat, and basically, our sidechain effect is made out of a cheat. Um, we put an LFO on the master. The shape of the LFO is a ramp up, and the rate is a um, one fourth. So um, that will give like the volume going up and down, and will give that kind of a side chain effect. But it's um, basically it's an LFO on the master. So basically, you like making out an automation on the volume, and. Um, yeah, basically you can put it in all the instruments. In this particular case, for example, I have um, this pad here, which is made of an um, ultra analog. It's basically uh, just a soul wave, really, it's really simple. And here is clean, and then when the bit comes in, you have this and you repeat that for the bass which is made out of a poly 6 which I love just makes like basically just a sounds but is really good for that sound and yeah again is the same thing in this particular case actually I've I've um, um, rooted both the pad and the uh, bass into a bus and the bus itself has a camouflage as well with the, the same trick to make it even more exaggerated and um, yeah and basically once the bit starts you just draw a step in your automation like here so when it starts the bit it goes like and um, the beat were uh, the beat is into a bus itself it, the beat is really e easy and really simple um, there's a kick which um, is not compressed at all there's a snare for the snare to have a, like a proper fight snare, you just like shorten, like you see this is like a bit longer than you shorten a little bit until it sounds um, tight enough and then you bit of fade out again until it's nice and tidy shaker. Shaker has a bit of shuffle on the when you put some 16 that, um, another good trick to use here you, see, you can see on the 16 it's slightly delayed it's slightly out of uh, its own place so it's like it's a little bit of shuffle then it's all into a bus the bus has a uh, quite few effects the first one that's the basically do all the sound clean here there's the 
pads as well. So, yeah, here is the original bead. It goes through this bus, which has a multiband compression, which is a final master of Yamaha. I love it. It's um, and the uh, preset set is CD master. I don't touch many of like, the um, patches because they really great like they're made by professional sound engineering most of the time so like most of the times it sounds better out of the box like the patch rather than touching it then there's this sonalysis compression is tbk3 which i really like is um it's a very like a it's not a um classic compressor it's a more uh creative compressor there's no attack release or any kind of the normal um, settings that you can change is mainly this big knob which is a kind of a threshold slash ratio thing and you can just trigger the amount of compression um, it's really good for well, just having some random good compression stuff but properly run because like you you don't have much control on it it's, it's very good for playing around with stuff and then the isotope or zone, which here basically just there's a bit of um, enhancement of the um, lower frequencies, but very very subtle. So yeah, I mean the bit is really really simple, and you have yeah just a baseline and a pad, and I think the most important thing for is um, actually the melody and the harmony needs to be kind of quite um epic like um because on the big sound system when you go to a club when when the, the melody is really really strong and the chords are really strong like gives a lot of um with, with together with the volume and the environment gives a, a lot of emotion and that's um that's the trick to when to achieve some kind of a that french house effect well i usually um start from like it looks quite complicated but like don't worry, I, I can't play instruments, so just um, I just mess around with um, keyboards and oh, most of the times I draw them like with. The <laughs> um, um, yeah, I mean, you start with like putting down um, the basic chords, like you find some kind of like um, chords that you're happy with, and then you shorten like the notes and you add little different layers. Of other notes that they actually, I mean, it's, it's a quite kind of quite um, random process, really. Just like you, you then just play with notes until you 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 add something that bit that adds a bit of movement because like the chords uh, they're quite still. Then you just put them. You add some more stuff on top. <laughs> So yeah, this might look a bit complicated, but it really is not. It's just chords that you put, and then you just shorten some notes, add some other notes that might suit, and then add a little bit of like melody on top. But um, it's really like just just to add a bit of movement, really, just to add a bit of um, interest on the thing. But it doesn't need to. You don't need to be like Van Halen to. <laughs> you just. Um, just need to use your ears really until you have been satisfied. This is the bass MIDI and again it's, it's really really simple. It's just you have a following the chords and then you have a little bit of just variation before the chord changes. Again, you just start following the, the original chords, and then just trying to make variation when 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 you can to add um, yeah a bit of interest. And again, but yeah, the trick is like keeping the track very very simple. And then for the mastering, just I I use a vintage warmer and. In this case, I don't use preset. I just like um, I use a very, very little subtle compression just to make sure it doesn't go over the zero. 
but um, well nowadays there's a lot of uh, these in the dance industry there's a lot of very like squashed uh, you, um, tracks you find when you analyze the tracks you buy the uh, ridiculously compressed and squashed and distorted like trying to aim for the more volume that you can which I found like a little bit silly um, yeah I mean you need to aim for like the maximum uh, volume you can but like you, you need to make sure you don't lose a nice dynamics otherwise um, if, if it's not loud enough it means you need to buy like a bigger sound system <laughs> I like to keep for for this kind of style, keep tracks quite dry, like not that many delays of reverb. Here, there's like you a little bit of um, this waves reverb thing on the on the pad. That is, it's really subtle. You can't you can't really tell the difference. It's just just a little bit. Basically, it's more to add space rather than adding like proper reverb, and you can do that as well at, um, on the snare. Um, what I do usually, like I have a, like a snare dry, like the main snare is dry, and then you can add a snare on the top of that with a little bit of reverb. Maybe like not in every single snare, but like every four or every eight hit, you can have a snare with a bit of. Um, uh, reverb like dry and then a hit with a bit of reverb but mainly yeah um, I like to keep my um, tracks quite dry uh, it's more it's, it's, it sounds much better when it is on, um, on a big sound system um, reverb and delays and mix on, on, on a big sound system make um, the track sounds quite muddy and quite boomy what I'm showing you now is a uh, um, how to make some kind of like cool cut it out samples um, this track is um, Love It's A Fan which is um, it's gonna be the next single and uh, it's um, on the album that it's just uh, being released on Moffat Hi-Fi and it goes a bit like that <laughs> Blah blah blah, and um, so yeah. I mean, um, here we have like um, a selection of um, samples, then like cuts it out very very shortly. So like you just like little snippets of uh, random voice, and then processed, and um, that's I mean the main interesting part of the song. As you can tell, there's little different snippets of voice. Um, there's not really like a, a method or a structure to, to make this works, but um, um, it's basically using like piece of records to to um, as a um, uh, source to to make to make um, different noises and make sure that they short enough and no one can recognize them otherwise be in trouble <laughs> the real trick is just play around a lot with them because uh, it's very easy to end up with something quite messy and just like really cut up but doesn't make any sense but um, uh, it works when when you develop some kind of taste and and uh, you use them as a, as instruments as you were playing guitar you you can't just play guitar and play any kind of notes randomly you need to play some music and that's the same thing really so like you need to make sure that everything that like, flows in an organic way and 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 makes sense really it's like it's like having someone that sings and play but it's somehow randomly cut up and and you can't you can't hear what they're saying or whatever um, but yeah I mean I just start like from um, I just like take some samples and I cut them and then I, I just play around until I I found like a sequence and I'm happy with and then once you found like the main loop 
then you can have a go and experiment some um, uh, some variation. And if we want, at some point, we just can play around and make some like take little sections. <laughs> It's an, an infinite process, really. Like, um, it's really in, enjoyable from my point of view. So, um, yeah, make sure you you, you select like the samples uh, properly, and then you spend the right amount of time just like having fun. From my point of view, someone might find it quite boring, but um, yeah, to make sure that the, the uh, your creation is organic and not just. It's, it's really easy to end up doing something quite random, um, and then like there's a that side chain trick on the volume, uh, a ramp up LFO on the master volume, and in this particular case, to create some modulation and make the the sample a little bit different, we can play uh, with the filter. So. Um, all the different ch channels they have um, the filter on with the modulation with different timing. So, like in um, in the arrangement, um, it makes nicely and makes modulation and every every different sounds at a different uh, timing. So it creates um, a nice uh, modulated effects. <laughs> Another good thing uh, you can you can do is uh, at some point when you created your loop is just um, mixing it and uh, bouncing it down uh, the whole loop and um, using it in, on a different channel and so you can like um, work separately on this as you can see this um, audio file is our bounce down loop of all our samples and you can work individually on, on the audio file you can cut it reverse it and um, in this particular case I use it uh, for an introduction so there's um and there's um, some modulation in the filtering with the ring modulator and a filter and it goes like and then I on top I add like the same samples again but in the original channels Modulation phase away, you open the filter and it goes into our main loop. I'm falling out. Um, I hope this um, tutorial has been useful for you, or at least some of you. Go and buy my album on Beatport if you like. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.